Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel is about a test pilot who, after an accident, is granted space cut powers by their dying mentor, and I'm sorry, this is clearly the plot of Green Lantern. There is a surprising amount of similarities when you think about it. Captain Marvel is about a space cop who teams up with a younger Samuel Jackson to hunt shape-shifting aliens that have infiltrated Earth. The titular hero, real name Carol Danvers and played by Brie Larson, is a fun character who seems to be enjoying actually being a hero, though there's a bit of ego to her as well. Basically, think Vegito with boobs. It said no, don't draw that. I said no! The story is ultimately about rising through adversity, of all the people telling her to stay down, stay in her lane, and striving to prove them wrong. In her case, a lot of feminist ideas are conveyed here, from her father being overly protective when she wants to do boys things, to the dickish nature of her male trainee pilots, but beyond that, it's played much more generic, so it's something that other people can actually relate to. The role of the Kree especially telling her to put a dampener on her powers while claiming it's what's best for her. I think anyone can relate to this story. Be you a worker in a low-income job, or say, being told that your band will never make it, or maybe you're a button-tier creator coming back to movie reviews after years away and acting like I never left. You know, all the things that we all do. She also has great chemistry with Nick Fury played by Samuel Jackson. I really like the back and forth, which helps make the movie much more engaging. Plus, this de-aging CG was done pretty well. Sometimes it can feel wonky, especially in a lot of the early movies where they were still testing out this technology, but here it really works. Unlike other projects where they didn't even try to pretend that a 40-year-old is playing a teenager. In conclusion, Captain Marvel isn't spectacular, but it is fun and entertaining. So I'm going to give it 4 stars. The villains could have used some more work, and the fights were passable, but not stand out. It reminds me of the first Iron Man movie in that respect, though it liked Robert Downey Jr.'s charisma to really elevate it. I will say it's a lot better than people give it credit for, and it's worth a stream at least. Next up, The Marvels. The Marvels follows Captain Marvel as her powers become entangled with two other heroes, Miss Marvel and Spectrum. No, but boy, that'd be a weird crossover. Age of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Captain Scarlet. Anyway, they team up to stop an alien general from nicking resources from other planets to fix her dying one. Miss Marvel had to start in a solo miniseries of the same name, played once again by Iman Bellani. I'll cover a solo series another time, you honestly don't really need to watch it to understand this movie, but she's one of the best elements of this film and of her show. She brings a lot of energy and heart to the character, which really elevates her presence and the movie as a whole. Tiona Paris reprises her role as Monica Rambeau, having first appeared in One Division, but again, that's not really important to this story. I mean, I doubt anyone's criticism of the Marvels is that they don't understand the intricacies of the relationship between two characters who aren't even in this. She does have a codename in this, but the comic's called Spectrum, so that's what I'm going with. She is alright here, but could have used a lot more time to flesh her out. There's a lot of storytelling potential with her that hasn't been capitalized on yet, but there's hints that they're going to do with more with her in the future. For this movie, she's mainly the serious-minded member of the team and fills that role pretty well, but it prevents her from making much of an impression. The villain, Da Ben, is serviceable but kinda lacking. I feel like her role should have really gone to the villain of the first movie, but she does well reflecting Carol's character. I mentioned that eagerness and ego from before, that actually becomes her main flaw in this movie. Carol's impulsiveness leads to creating problems for herself, her friends, and even the entire planets, like when she charges into Strom's peace talk, which gets a lot of people killed. Oh well, the bad guys were probably going to attack anyway because, you know, the bad guys. She's not let off the hook. The movie calls her out in her actions, which gives her an art to work with, and also informs her relationship with the other Marvels. I feel like it could have been given much greater focus, and I blame the short runtime on that. While I appreciate movies that can tell a story in 90 minutes, or in this case around 105, sometimes that extra time can help sell the audience on the character's arc. Say you want about the Killer of the Flower Moon's gargantuan three and a half hour runtime, but at the very least it used every second. I think that's this movie's biggest failing. It's not doing anything bad per se, but it's not excelling. The villain, fine. Jokes, had a few chuckles. Characters, good but not excellent. The action? That's pretty awesome, actually. It's not just throwing special effects at the audience and calling it a day. There's actual choreography and a great flow to the combat. Even when there's a lot going on, I can still follow every movement and every hit has this weight to it. There's this thing going on where the Marvels switch places when they use their powers at the same time, that later on they use their advantage. And the final fight has them switching out pretty fluently in the middle of it. I'm not saying the director definitely saw Jujutsu Kaisen, but I am getting some boogie-woogie vibes from this. In conclusion, the Marvels has an engaging cast and an awesome fight scene, so it's four stars. There's room for improvement, but it's way better than some critics give it credit for. 
I think caution should be taken since I might be in the minority of this, but I'd at least check it out in streaming. It might surprise you. The Captain Marvel movies are sadly not living up to their potential in my opinion. There's so much more room for this character to grow, but she hasn't really been given a script that will really push her to the edge. I think Carol needs her equivalent of Iron Man 3 or No Way Home, so that really shows what she could do emotionally, and hopefully a third movie will allow her to do that. And the trilogy on a high note, and maybe actually give her a damn sesh, seriously, why did none of her costumes ever have this? It's been part of her costume since she was Miss Marvel, it's kind of her thing. That aside, these movies are still a lot of fun. They've got creative ideas and bright colorful visuals, and even my gripes aside, I do have a lot of fun with them. And I feel like people aren't being too hard on. I don't need a movie to set the world on fire and create the next big thing in cinema. Sometimes, I just had a really shitty day and I want to watch a lady fly through space and shoot lasers at bad guys for two hours before I return to reality. So check these out in streaming again. Hopefully you'll have as much fun as I did. Take care now. Bye bye then.